I still couldn't figure it out, but I found out something very interesting that happens nevertheless. So if I place that queen in the center and give it a little shake, it turns face up. Now, this part I can follow, but what I didn't follow is this. If I place that queen over there, how can it possibly be over there unless, of course, that's a nine over there? See, if I place the queen over there, how can it be over there unless, of course, that's a nine over there? Now, <laughs> this part I didn't quite follow. <laughs> So I said, let's just do it with a queen in the nine and a little wallet. Uh, see, if I place the nine in the wallet, snap my fingers, now the nine jumps over here and the queen's inside the wallet. So if I put the queen in the wallet, the nine here, give it a little tap, now the nine's in the wallet and the queen, oh, sometimes the queen jumps over there, but that's the three card Monty as far as I know it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, thank you. The Irish three-card trick. He called it that because it used four cards. <laughs> and three of these cards were blank. They were printed when the factory was on strike. And one of them was an ace. And he said, I'll place one of those cards aside and make one of the blank cards aside. And all you have to do is guess whereabouts the ace is. I shall first of all mix the cards up. So he put the ace in the middle, as we did before, mixed the cards up and said, now, whereabouts do you think the ace is? Well, I said, it's in the middle. He said, for one dollar, you think it's in the middle. I'm sorry, you owe me a dollar. I said, well, it must be on the bottom or the top. He said, I'm awfully sorry to tell you this, but it's not on the bottom, it's not on the top, and it's not in the middle. The ace is over here, that's two dollars you owe me. I said, well, wait a minute, give me another chance of that. He said, okay, a blank card goes aside and the ace goes in the middle, and I want you to see that is actually the case, the ace does go in the middle. He said, now, I mixed the cards up as before, whereabouts do you think the ace is? And I said, I think it's in the middle. I'm very stubborn that way. <laughs> And he said, I'm awfully sorry, but that's four dollars you owe me. Now, I know I should have said this card over here, but I didn't. I said, it must be on the top or the bottom then. He said, I'm awfully sorry, that's eight dollars you owe me. The ace is over here. I said, wait a moment, give me another chance. I'm beginning to catch on at this point. He said, OK, this is very simple. There's the ace. A blank card goes over here, and we mix these up. Now he said, whereabouts is the ace? And I said, you don't have me this time. The ace is right just there. And he said, well, I'm sorry, but that's $16 you owe me. I said, I don't think you have any aces. And he says, you know, the funny thing is, you could have bet that it was on the bottom. You could have bet that it was on the top. You could have bet that it was in the middle. You didn't. You actually bet over there. That's $32 you owe me. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the day that I quit gambling, I'll tell you. <laughs> and a cut. And a gambler at this particular point may be able to manipulate those cards and get a card that he wants to the top of the deck. Uh, let's say the ace of spades, that's a good easy card, and he would give the cards a cut. And then he would keep that ace for himself and deal the second card from beneath it. See, it, it looks like he's dealing the card, but he's actually keeping the ace on top. Now, where this is done face up, it looks quite a little bit... Uh, bit different, a little easier for you to follow. You see, he looks like he's dealing the card, but actually, of course, he keeps it for himself. Now, this is all very well, but I figured you can take this a little step further. I mean, it's fairly easy to deal the second card from beneath a card, but what about dealing it from beneath a postage stamp? Well, Maybe a little harder to do, but I've practiced very hard, and I think I can do it. Now, if you watch this very carefully, you'll actually see the second card being dealt from beneath the postage stamp. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to watch this myself. <laughs> uh, seems to have got stuck on one card. Isn't that sort of funny? What card did you look at? Um, the Eight of Hearts. Isn't that funny how it seems to have stuck on just that one card? <laughs> you take out a pencil, you show it very carefully and uh, point out that it matches your eyes. In my case, it really does. It's been a long day. Uh, and you say, but this is an unusual pencil because it'll match the eyes of anybody that touches it. And you ask a young lady spectator to hold onto the pencil for just a moment, which she does. When you take it back, you say, now it will match your eyes, but it needs to be put through a darkroom process. I'll do that by passing it through my hand, and as it passes through, you can see it begins to change color. It changes to a beautiful shade of baby blue to match the young lady's eyes, and at this point, you can take the pencil and hand it to them and let them continue on with the tricks. If you'd like to just push yours back inside the deck, just any way you like, and don't forget what the card is. Okay. And the same thing if you just put it back any way you like. That's well done. <laughs>
and those we'll put back in the box and get back to those in just a moment because I want to introduce you to a few of the extra props that I'm going to be using for this particular trick. First thing is a, a drinking glass, sorry, an ashtray and a little handkerchief. Now, um, let me just leave these out for a second and we'll set the handkerchief on the table to isolate the deck of cards from the, the surface of the table. The ashtray, once again, to isolate everything, I'll leave that open this way. And finally, we'll isolate that deck of cards totally by inverting a drinking glass over the top. Now, there's no way that anybody can possibly get out of that with, with any, without anybody knowing. For the first time, I need to know your card. Would you tell me out loud? Two of clubs. The two of clubs, all I have to do is say, rise, rise. Oh, I'm sorry, it didn't. It was your card, the Queen of Hearts, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, I knew it. Uh, sometimes the two cards do get confused, but it did rise up. That's the first one, your Queen of Hearts. And we know what your card is, uh, the Two of Clubs. You've already told us that any time you like, just say rise. Rise. And when you say that, your card rises up, <laughs> jumps out of the deck. You can examine that, you can examine the cards. That's it. All right.